much do you weigh in water? I don't know. Zero. I nothing. You're yeah. neutrally buoyant. So in water, we don't weigh anything. Put a scale in water and stand on it and read it. Okay? That's what I'm saying. Okay. okay. So when you don't weigh anything, then structurally, you're not putting yourself at risk. And that's why the largest creature there ever was is a mammal and it lives in the ocean. Right. It's a whale. Right. The blue whale. Right. So when they say, how much does a whale weigh? Right. The answer is zero. They give you a weight. And how do they give you a weight? They take it out of the water, right. put it on a scale on the on dry land. Right. And then it weighs, you know, a gazillion tons, but that's not the weight that the whale feels as it moves through the ocean. The next thing I say may be mind blowing to you. Okay. Okay. The tide doesn't actually come in and out. What happens is there is a bulge of water, two of them on opposite sides of the earth, caused by the sun and the moon, and earth turns inside that bulge. So when, this, when we say the water rises and falls tidally, what's happening is we are rotating into the bulge and then out of the bulge. So the bulge is already it's there. It's already there. I can't speak for cat owners, but those who own dogs, you know that every time you come back from wherever you went, the dog is happy and it's jumpy and it wants to lick you in the face. Even if you just went to get mail from the mailbox. Yeah. Delight in your return. If you want to take them out for a car ride, they are the first in the car. <laughs> they jump in, they don't care where it's going, but they're going somewhere. Yeah. They're some of the most joyous creatures that live among us. And no, I'm not a dog psychologist, <laughs> but let me offer a possible, a plausible account of this. Okay. Uh, dogs don't live as long as we do. An old dog is like 14 and then they die. We live to 90 if we're, you know, eat well and wear a seatbelt. You divide the two, you get a, basically a factor of seven, okay? Yeah. So this is the, where the seven dog years formula comes from. Gotcha. Okay, uh, so the dog is three, oh, they're 21 in dog years. This is what we say. How authentic is that, you can ask? It's a convenience, but is there any deeper meaning to it? And I think there is. Okay. It means every single day a dog lives is equivalent to a week of your life. Oh, wow. That's a <laughs> seven to one ratio. Poor yeah. handsome. So if they, <laughs> if, if, if they only get one day for every week you're alive, they make every day count. Now, of course, they're not yeah, doing gonna, the math. I got to right take my dog for a while. <laughs> if one was able to stop time, is it true that you wouldn't be able to see anything because the photons would freeze too? Can we make an exception to that? And in the limit, at the speed of light, time stops. Yeah. Photons, which exist at the speed of light, when they are emitted at whatever, wherever they came from, my... PhD thesis was on the center of the galaxy, mm -hmm. which is 30,000 light years away. And when I captured those photons, for me watching them, they took 30,000 years. But if you're the photon, the instant you left the center of the galaxy, you hit my detector you're right there in the same instant. Yeah. So if there's zero time, I don't know what effect that would have on the photons. Right. Because they don't ever have time. Yeah, they, they're so outside I mean, of time. In a way, they're outside of time. Black holes are not giant sucking machines. Right. They just have a gravitational field. Got if you get really, really close, kiss your ass goodbye. So that's where it got complicated. And we had to worry about what's called spiral density waves. It's not really a physical gaseous structure. The gas is everywhere. There's a density wave that's moving across the clouds, triggering star formation. Wow. Right. I heard that the magnetic field was actually reversed at one time. Yeah. In the Earth's history. Oh, yeah. Okay, you ready? Hit me. Okay. When we were growing up, the North Magnetic Pole was in northern Canada. It was never where Santa is. Whoa. Okay? So Earth's magnetic pole has shifted from our rotation poles. I don't know if you, you didn't know that. I did not yeah, yeah, know okay. this. And it's not stationary. It moves. It's moving. Wait, wait, hang on. Hang on. So when we were growing up, it was kind of meandering in the Canadian, you know, that whole northern area of Canada where there's just islands and lakes and things, that's where it was. Which meant, if you were up in Canada, you couldn't use a compass to find north, because it could be south of you. That's right. Okay? So it's no good way up in, way farther down, oh. you get a, a kind of right. Good Boy Scout books would have a correction table, depending on where you were in longitude, Incredible. relative to good Boy Scout books. Now watch, you check it lately. That North Pole has been moving, and it is now passing the North Pole 
on its way to Siberia. What? On top of all that, the magnetic field is getting weaker. Oh. And we think it's going to get weaker and weaker until it goes away. And then when it comes back again, it'll be in reverse because it flips every time. We worry that when the magnet field goes away to flip again, by the, this is called a dynamo effect, when it goes away and flips, that while it's not there, will it put all of us at risk? Yeah. So we go back in the fossil record because it's flipped before. And if you go to the points where it has flipped, there's no periods of mass extinction. So if it wreaked havoc, it was not global catastrophe. Right. Okay, so first of all, uh, aliens may be vastly more intelligent than we are. In fact, anyone ever portrayed in the film is clearly that because they figured out how to get here Correct. and we haven't left low Earth orbit in 50 years. So <laughs> hey, they're we're clearly trying. smarter okay. and they're probably stronger than us. You have people shooting their guns at the spaceship, like, come on. The question is, why would we think they would be interested in us at all? I feel that's like our ego talking. Well, I'm okay. getting, I'm getting oh, okay. that's our okay. ego Sorry. saying we are so interesting that vastly more intelligent and technologically capable species are going to come and want to observe us and poke our gonads. And but this is the height of ego. Yeah. First of all, <laughs> okay, when you walk by a worm, do you say, "Gee, I wonder what that worm is thinking"? Oh, let me find out. No, you don't care. All right, that's my first comment. Second, I joke, only half joke, that maybe they have visited us. And they just happened to land during Comic-Con. <laughs> and nobody... Okay. If dark matter doesn't interact with us, it kind of also doesn't interact with itself. Or does it? Oh, yes, it does. It annihilates. So when two dark matter particles hit each other, they annihilate, which means they turn into something else. But nobody asked, well, yeah, but if you're a smack in the middle of the proto-galaxy, what about the dark matter? What does that do? Right. So that was a question that we asked. And... You would be changes. enclosing some volume of dark matter in doing so. Well, there's a lot of dark matter at the center of our galaxy, at the center yeah. of the proto-galaxy. Okay. The fact that you're smack in the middle is what counts. Got it. Because that's mm -hmm. where you got a lot of dark matter. Nope. Okay. It's just to go to the center of any m massive object, a galaxy, a cluster, anything, that there's a ton of dark that's, matter in okay. there. And then as you move out, there's less. it gets less and less dense in terms of the dark matter. You know, this is a, a weird thought. It, the the way stars are moving around the center of the galaxy, they would get flung out of the galaxy if it weren't for the dark matter providing the gravitational right. pull to keep them in. Right. right. We we are, if 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 there were beings made of dark matter, dark energy, they would see us as a contaminant in their universe. Which, by the way, is a violation of the Copernican principle. Oh. Copernican principle says that we are not special in time or in place. We're in location. We're orbiting an average star in an average galaxy. So statistically, it says that we're average. But if we are contained within that 5% of all the laws of physics, chemistry, biology, and all the ingredients that make up matter as we know it, then we are something unusual. 